So today I wanted to talk about um, how we can move past past wrongs, like how we can get over things that have hurt us in the past, how we can move on from it, and how we can do it like that. Thanks so much for tuning in. My name's Sean. This is the How To Hero YouTube channel where we try our best to bring out the heroes that sleep within all of us. Now, I'm extremely energetic today, so I'm like extra bouncy. I always shake around and bounce. Um, it's it's a, a thing that I do. You're gonna see it in videos. I can't help it, like my legs just go bananas. Um, I'm not on anything. It just, that's just what happens. So uh, let's. I just wanted to get that out of the way in case you notice that I look fidgety or something. <clears throat> Before we can talk about the concept of getting rid of the suffering that you're experiencing um, and moving past it, we need to examine how it came about in the first place. Um, once we do that, then we can discuss the technique and then we can, uh, you know, get over it. Easy, right? No, it's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. So there's a few different types of, of suffering. It's mostly, um, it's all gonna be fear, guilt, or resentment of some kind. Either you're scared of something, um, whether it's inside yourself or with somebody else's behavior, you're scared of something they might do. So you're scared of something, something they might do. Um, there are a couple of different types of suffering. Um, primarily, what I'm gonna focus on here is fear, guilt, and resentment. Those are the, the main, those are the main ones. Those are the baddest of the bad. Uh, they tend to be the things that we carry around with us a long time. Um, and we don't always know where they come from. Um, you know, like, why are some people scared of spiders, for example, that type of thing. Um, you know, was it because they got bit once? Or, you know, is the, is it just their amygdala kicking in and it doesn't need to, you know what I mean? Um, so that's the fear. And and it all, that's the, that's the issue is that the what happens is the ego engages your amygdala and makes you think, oh my God, I have to run away from this. Or, oh my God, this person's hurting me and I need to hurt them. I need to hurt them back. Uh, so you're either gonna fight or you're gonna fly, right? Um, and and uh, and that's that's at the heart of it. And when you're holding on to these stories uh, about the uh, narrative of your life, I guess um, these can build momentum. These feelings can build on each, on themselves and actually get you can get more upset about it as time goes on instead of what would the healthy thing to be to do would be to get less upset um but the ego doesn't want that because the ego wants to form a solid as solid a foundation as it can it's 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 trying to root itself as deep as it can just get right in there and root itself in and so um the first step is to recognize that there's two uh let's call them voices in your head. There's there's two people there. So if you kind of close your eyes and just think about your think about your situation where you, where you're sitting, think about the room you're in. Um notice that you're after a few seconds you're probably going to have a thought of some kind. Uh like you need to take the dog out or you need to do this thing or you should have done that thing or whatever it is. It could, it's totally random. Um, but there's the the person that there's the uh, the observer of the thought. And then there's the thinking mind. They're separate. They're separate entities. And uh, when you can see that um, you're the observer, you're the awareness, you're the consciousness. The thinking mind is the ego. When you're rationalizing things with uh, explanations and 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 that type of thing, um, in an effort to cover up the real reason that you want X Y Z, 
that's that's the ego um with uh your your real consciousness if you want something you'll just say i want that and that's it you don't need to talk about it any more than that i want it because it's awesome that's it and uh it's that simple so that's that's kind of how ego works and the self versus the ego there's kind of two you's running the machine of your mind um and so once you can recognize that then you're well on your way now it took me a while personally to get that um i had heard people talk about that um and i didn't get it i didn't i didn't understand what what that meant um and so I'm trying to uh, to bring it in here because I think it's relevant, but at the same time, it's uh, it's kind of a, a an odd esoteric kind of concept that that um, doesn't lend itself to being easily understood without some guidance uh, personally, uh, one on one type thing. <clears throat> All right, so the trick to get over anything that has been done, any transgression wrong done by by yourself or to you uh no matter what um oh i guess i'll just say it forgiveness yep it's really it really is that simple forgiveness is the most powerful way for you to break the bond of pain and the bond of suffering that you've identified with with the incident whatever the incident is so um, in, 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 I would say that in my area of the world, forgiveness is seen as a weakness. It's seen as a almost condoning of the uh, activity instead of what it truly is. Forgiveness has nothing to do with the other person. It, you don't have to tell them you forgive them. It has nothing to do with them at all. Uh, forgiveness is a purely thing for you. It's so that you can move on because you can't move on. And like, there's still pain. They're still delivering you pain from this thing that they did to you a decade ago or two decades ago, three decades ago. There's still, you're still engaged with that. You still identify with that. And so you're still going to have pain from it. So if you can't let go of that pain, then you right. So I said it was simple, but it's not easy. Um, and I know it's not easy to forgive people because some people do very bad things. And those people should be held accountable for what they do. Uh, so I'm not suggesting that they shouldn't be held responsible. Uh, and I'm not saying they are not responsible. So, uh, and just to give an example, so I'll, I'll get a bit personal here. So, um, when I was 14, I was uh, drinking a 40 under the bridge. I was waiting for my buddy to come because we, uh, I had just gotten a fight with my girlfriend, I think. And uh, I, we would sit under there and talk, me and this guy. And uh, I was waiting for him. I had a 40 for me and a 40 for him. And I was, uh, I had just started mine, so barely had any. And my, uh, and I heard kind of rustling in the bushes or whatever, cause it was in, uh, and kind of an older train track type area and uh a cop just kind of showed up out of nowhere and uh so i said oh uh, hey officer kind of thing uh i have no idea what i said but uh he basically said uh oh what do you got going on here you shouldn't drink this piss etc cetera, etc cetera. and as as he went on and on he started to say that you know uh he can tell i'm a good kid and he just wants to uh to help me not get in trouble so he, to, to, he wanted me to pour out the the liquor and then he wanted me to go with him to a squad car and so my whole life i mean until then i'd, I'd been informed that police officers are uh they're the ones that you need to trust they're uh protectors of us right uh the protectors of us regular folk the guardians type thing i i saw them as almost superheroes when i was a kid i always wanted to be one um and so I, I, I said, oh, oh, okay. And in, you know what I, I'll say as well, my intuition at the time was screaming at me that this is not the right, 
this is not the right thing. But because my child mind couldn't grasp the difference between, um, I guess, a, uh, uh, me walking into a bad situation with a bad person uh, versus the uh, immediate and irrefutable trust of the authority figure. So anyway, so they, he took me to his car and he basically put me in the back and then he molested me. Um, now, I haven't talked about this publicly at all. I haven't talked about this really even with anyone. Um, I pulled a, a, a few very close people um, and my therapist. But the reason I share it is not uh, for pity or anything like that. It's it's that I've I've been able to forgive this individual. Um, and and it came at a price, right? Like it's it, it, not not a price. I shouldn't say a price. It came at work. It was not simple for me to to reach that conclusion. It wasn't it wasn't easy for me to to uh, just be content with what had happened. Um, you what I needed to do was to look at it from the perspective of you know things happen and that's it. It's not it's not something I can go back and change. Um, and also, um, Jesus, Jesus said it when he was dying on the cross. He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. As he's being murdered, he's forgiving them for doing the murdering. They are asleep. It's their ego. It's their unconscious mind committing these atrocities. So this cop that did this to me was likely conditioned, he was probably abused, he was conditioned to think that this is how he needed to uh, get some sexual gratification or sexual release. Uh, and, uh, you know, he also taught me a very, very, very valuable skill that came in handy many times throughout my life, uh, which was the ability to go inside myself and ignore external stimuli. Um, I almost don't feel pain when I do that. Um, I mean, I feel significant pain, but if, if it's just light pain, I don't feel it. Um, and and you know what? He's uh, that's that that has helped me a few times. Um, and so I wouldn't change it. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't go back and do it differently. I wouldn't um, change anything. I experienced what I needed to experience in order to find the strength that I needed to find and to find the, um, I don't know. I don't know exactly, but the, the, the path. If that didn't happen to me, who knows? Who knows how I'd become, right? Who knows what, what other person would be here right now? Um, and so for that reason, I, I can't. I can't ever want to change that. Um, and so you, once you start to recognize that the people that are doing these things to you are acting out of this sleep, sleep, they're sleepwalking, you know, they're, they're unconscious. They're not, they're not even aware of their own patterns of behavior their, or their thought patterns. They're not really even aware of necessarily the impact they have on others. Um, and so it's really difficult to blame them for their behavior. It's kind of like, you know, that drunk guy at your party, he's like, he's way too drunk. Everyone tells him to just go to sleep. He finally goes to sleep, but he passes out on a couch and he pisses the bed or pisses the couch. I mean, it's not like you meant to do it. It's just, it's just gonna happen. And I'm not saying that these individuals didn't decide to do this thing. Because they did, they did. Uh, oftentimes, they did decide to hurt hurt us or to abuse us or whatever it is. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't their self, it wasn't their consciousness and their awareness that was choosing that. It was the ego. The awareness, the consciousness, is light and love, always, infinitely. Whereas the ego is insanity. 
So the, the light and the love and the peace is not going to attempt to do the things that the ego did. And the ego does those things to establish um, usually like a social dominance or a uh, something like that, like a, a feeling of superiority, uh, that type of thing. One final thing is I just wanted to say that there's internal and external forgiveness. So it's so important to just forgive yourself. Almost, almost everything is you. You reflect into the world what you see about yourself kind of thing. Um, it's why people who are socially awkward are almost always very low self-esteem individuals. You know, they, they, they're awkward because they think they're awkward. So they act awkward and it compounds it, right? I mean, um, as they, as they get older, usually they begin to realize nobody gives a shit. Um, nobody's worried about what they're doing. Like nobody's care. <laughs> Everybody's too wrapped up in their own nonsense monkey mind, right? Nobody cares what anyone's doing. So, so don't worry about it. Like I wasted so many years uh, thinking that I needed to do this or that. Um, just don't. Um, but that's a that's a topic for another story or another video. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. I'm going to be setting up some one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions for um, empaths or highly sensitive people or other people that would like to connect with me um, and do some type of life coaching. Um, if that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments. I'd, I'd like to hear about that. Um, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what the offerings are going to be yet, so I'll be uh, posting more details on that soon. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate it very much. If you like the video, please click that like button. It really helps with the channel. And if you feel so inclined, please hit that subscribe button as well and turn on the bell for notifications. Thank you so much. Take care and namaste.